everybody. This is the award-winning car talk show in real time, your weekly go-to all things automotive place, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. Howdy, King Mom. Conrad along. Jeffrey Zekin is right over there. Don Armstrong here. Glad that you could join us on this Saturday. We really appreciate it. We were talking about batteries and that this is the time of year that batteries seem to go on the fritz. Well, it's some, somewhat because it's cold, but when I was doing warranty audits with GM, it's because it's deer season. <laughs> and they, they'd figure out a reason to replace all these batteries in all these Oldsmobiles through know. the years because they had a... Uh, because oh everybody needed it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, we have a surprise guest today. Dun, dun, Hi, dun. George. 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 Uh, George. Hello, George. George, uh, George, George, we see you, but you can't hear us, apparently. Turn your volume up, George. Hey, guys. There you there go. We go. Uh oh. There he is. Is it George? I still Skelton? can't hear you. Well, Mike. We, we, yeah. we can hear you just fine. Well, let's 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 go back to George after we get hey, our. Guys. There you go. Uh oh. There he is. I got is it George? I still Skelton? can't hear you. Well, Mike. Okay, it's yeah. it's all delayed and everything. I can't. We can't. I can't. I, I that ain't gonna work. All so right. we'll we'll let you guys work on all of that. I can't believe that we got George on. <laughs> but uh, at any rate, I that's a nice treat. Anyway, we're talking about batteries. So, you know, when, when the cold weather comes, it stresses the battery. Uh, and then, you know, through the summer and all the humidity and stuff in Houston, uh, one of the issues is always the corrosion on top of a battery. And all of that makes the battery not charge properly. And it, you know, kind of stresses the, not only the battery life, uh, it stresses the alternator and the charger as well. So I have so many questions about that. The, the, do they still require the felt pad? Before you connect it with the connector, and also is dielectric grease an option for that? We always recommend that you put an anti-corrosion pad underneath a battery. Does Which is that little felt thing? Yeah. Yeah, but they don't come from the factory like that. No. Uh, and then, uh, you know, spray Well, where it. do you buy something like that? Yeah, your auto parts store. Uh, we sell them at BG. <laughs> Those little... Yeah, felt little, little things. felt pads. That you get one, and it's treated. A good one is going to be treated with some kind of a chemical to fight the acid that vapor that the acid vapors that actually come out of the battery. You know, the underhood temperatures change so much. Uh, the plastic expands and contracts at a different rate than the lead does. So you get these little whispers of battery acid that come out, and then that and the moisture and the dust and the dirt. A little whisper of whisper. battery acid? Oh, my God. Did put a little bit back here, a little that's bit back what, here. And that's what causes that, that corrosion, that white, crusty substance that fuzz. happens on your battery terminals. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that fuzz on your battery terminals is really very bad. You really need to get it corrected can you, pretty quick. Can you clean that with Coca-Cola? Because that was the old wives' tale. Does it still work? Coke or Pepsi, people have used that. And, and, the, and the reason for that is because Coke and Pepsi are very alkaline. So when you mix an alkaline and an acid together, the, the mixture byproduct is a water and a, and a salt of some kind. So, yeah, that's... My it, dad always taught it. me get the uh, baking soda out and mix yeah, up some baking water. Soda is, baking soda is also alkaline. Yeah. So when you mix the two of those together, it neutralizes the acid, it neutralizes the alkaline, and uh, what's left is uh, uh, water and salt. So, yeah, but you got to... It's not just what's on the outside. On the post itself and the way the terminal clamps on the post, generally you get corrosion between the post and the terminal. Correct. And it's that corrosion between the post and the terminal that's, that's somewhat and damaging to the car. And they make a cleaning uh, tool that's basically a little uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. wire brush. Around, yeah, around. It's a wire brush on one end and then a round thing that you on the post. And it works great. Works great. Dad used to take a pocket knife and just kind of whittle out the... Well, yeah, and you would see uh, sometimes you'd call the wrecker to come get you uh, because your battery was dead, and the wrecker driver would get out there, he'd pop your hood, and he'd look at that science project growing on your battery terminals, <laughs> and he'd go grab a pair of channel lock pliers and just twist it a little bit, break all that corrosion off, and your car would start and run. Yeah. And, and the other thing common. is is that if you see all of that ugly corrosion on there... Chances are the vapors from all of that have gone down the side of the battery right to where the battery tray is. And if you ever lift the battery out of it, the tray's all rotten. Rusted out. Yep. And that's generally uh, 
more because you have a little bit of an acid leak. Uh, the, as, the acid leak is, uh, is very damaging, and on your Corvette, the acid leak can be real damaging because remember when we were looking to uh, fix your AC system, when James Bragg was chasing the AC system, when you looked underneath the battery, there are these big, huge wire connectors, 224 terminal connectors that pass under there. So when they would fill up with battery acid, it would be extremely expensive to uh, uh, to repair. Why don't you, we good to, go? good to go? We're good to go. So let's go back to our buddy. And friend in Temple, Texas, correct? Correct. Well, I'm glad you got it all worked out, George. It's good to see your racing. Sh you got your racing shirt on. You got your in wheel. I got BBT, uh, NASCAR stuff on just for you, Don. You know, I used to work for BBT uh, Bank, which is better known as Bass Boat and Trailer Company. And. All I no, can say wasn't. is, live from Temple, Texas, it's the Don and Conrad birthday party. <laughs> <laughs> and our special guest today is going to be Kitterick. Kitterick. Cadet Don. Oh, my God, yep. Mm -hmm. And Stan, the vice president of Richardson Chevrolet. Yeah. <laughs> Bringing all the boys back. Bringing all the boys back. They're yeah. going to finally make Don pay for all the paint jobs he ruined. No, that's well, exactly right. Getting the band back together. So Mike said y'all had, I mean, I got to tell you, that last review, you stretched it like I never have seen you stretch something, Don. <laughs> well, you know, we're trying to fill a little time here because we were depending on guests from the Tailpipes and Tacos cruise in, which we typically do, and it's very popular because we get to talk to guys that are true enthusiasts, and they bring their cars, and obviously they're there. Let's find out about you and your car and all that. And they're well, always willing to join us. When you and pull talk the about plug them. on on the, at an event that we've lined up for strictly guests, eh, not so much anymore. What do you got there? Well, this is my birthday gift that I got for Betty Skelton, 50th anniversary, 53 Corvette. Oh, wow. And it's one of my prized possessions in my garage. In, in, in real, do you have a 53 real car? No, this is a 124th. <laughs> Oh, okay. The one but he keeps it in the garage. He keeps it in the garage. <laughs> just to tell people shelf. it's in the garage. <laughs> so it's just it's just like see, I got the I got the Clint Boyer signed BB and T car. Betty signed mine too, but that's that was my big big deal when I was with Bass Boat and Trailer Coming. And uh Clint Boyer's going to the uh announcer's booth this year. He ought to be a hoot. He, he is he, he is, is that. He, he is a funny of course, cat. My favorite car was my two thousand seven Crossfire, Chrysler Crossfire, which was and which was a Mercedes Benz, uh, um, the, their S SLK. Yeah, SLK. Yeah, it shares SLK, the platform. SLK, that's correct. And and I I actually named my company after it, so it's Crossfire Properties. Nice, because you're a real estate agent now, right? No, no, no. I'm a property manager. A property so manager. I, we have a small small company, and we try to keep people in houses during COVID. I got you. Yeah, okay. how's that working so, out? So the real reason that Mike called me was he needed somebody to fill in, but <laughs> obviously. No, we, wanted, we were going to talk cars. We've talked some cars here. Obviously, I wanted to wish you the best, happiest, 70th birthday. I'm not, I'm not 70, George. I thought it was 80. Uh, I'm, no. He's starting his eighth decade. No, not of Don the above. is an octogenarian. I, I'm only 60. You're so full. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but well, then act your age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, instead of and hobbling of course, around. We, we can't leave Conrad out. Yeah. Nobody said much about his birthday. Uh, but yeah. birthday I'm, 60, I'm 63, and if Don is only 60, it just means he's missing 10 years. It was that, that 10 years he spent in the seventh grade. I want to know how many, <laughs> how many, years, of, uh, how many years is this in dog years? Oh my God! Oh my! Oh, Lord. that would be so. It'd only be ten. That's a question for Suze. <laughs> the Suze, she's over here. She's all she's uh, napping. Na napped out, but she heard her name and looked up. So, yeah, she's so, over you here. Know, so Mike was like, "Okay, fill the time, George." Anyway, <laughs> I can tell you that that Don has been the same great guy since the first time I met him to today. He never forgets his friends. 
He's Albert Sidney Johnston Junior High School. He's ki- he's kind to his enemies. Well, most of them. And <laughs> then I've always said this. He's had one of the most dangerous jobs flying over the city of Houston reporting everything that takes place in that town. All the bad stuff. And, and you know, I've always wanted to ask you this, Don. Why is it that when you would fly over Southwest Freeway and you would say it's rush hour and the cars are only going five miles an hour? <laughs> yeah, there's no rush to get anywhere, apparently. No, no, nobody's rushing because it's a parking lot. George, exactly. a lot of times I see, I live in a two-story home, a lot of times I see him and his chopper hanging out my window. So, how's that? It's that <laughs> pool down the street. Yeah. <laughs> at the pool. <laughs> at the, at well, the Don, Houston Don Club. Don helped me a bunch in my career. He doesn't even realize it, but I used to represent the city of Houston. And so, uh, during Hurricane, um, I think it was, Al- I think Tropical Storm Allison, the, the sewer plant down on Bray's Bio overflowed. Yep. I remember that. And so, I sent Don a note and I said, hey, any way I could get some of that video. So one of the guys got me some video of that, of showing everything um, going down, down the down the cre- uh, down the bio, which we used to play in when we were kids by old man Meyer's house. And uh, anyway, I helped the city of Houston get their claim resolved uh, associated with the London markets and everything. But um, I made the suggestion to him that uh, he ought to kind of beef up his broadcast a little bit and add a little fun in and so i wrote him a little deal and and of course i don't know if i can do the whirly bird like it sounds like but it, conrad it, can it, add that something like something like this is don yeah. armstrong uh, and i'm <laughs> over uh bray's bio here over the sewer plant and uh, it's a terrible sight uh there, there there's a there's a water buffalo turned over down there on bray's wood and uh it's backing up traffic all the way to buffalo speedway <laughs> Hey George, kind of, kind of slide over. Let him see your background. You got a great background there. Oh, there you right. go, Don. <laughs> Diamond studded. Diamond studded with for gold our balloons. for our stud. <laughs> George, you know, you never fail to amaze me and keep me amused. <laughs> I have to tell you that. But for those that don't know, George and I go way back to junior high school. We've known each other that long. And George, uh, George's dad is, is quite the character himself. And uh, why don't you tell us about the theater downtown and all that briefly? Yes, please. Oh, well, my, my dad, of course, uh, ran the Metropolitan Theater for a number of years. And uh, he, <clears throat> he just did everything. Now, when you were at KYLX, we were doing the promotionals with KLOL. And we were doing Saturday night shows and and in the theater. And, oh, my gosh, we had Billy Preston, Bob Seger, just every band that you could possibly imagine. And my dad didn't charge anything for the theater. He just sold uh, concessions and stuff. It was like two bucks to get in. It was some of the coolest times in downtown Houston before he lost the lease on the theater and it, and, it was, and closed down. But, I mean, we had all kinds of stars that would come in. He was always giving away stuff, cars at the Alabama and the village. He gave away a dolphin at the, at the Alabama one time. I remember that. He had a pogo stick contest <laughs> uh, out in front of the Alabama and a kid pogo stick for four hours. And the pogo stick was smoking. <laughs> and he, his mother and dad won the car. Well, I, it, obviously, you get uh, a, a lot of your personality from your dad. Well, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. That's a compliment. Well, it, a great it, guy. It, yeah. it was meant as one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, you know, uh, the Metropolitan Theater days. It, is it the Metropolitan that is still there that they've turned it into some sort of a venue? Is it the no, Met- they tore all that down. It, it was right across from First City National Bank, the big white building. Yep. Uh, it's right by Foley's, uh, Lamar Hotel and all that, and they built a big complex there. But, you know, he started the closed-circuit broadcast of the Indianapolis 500, and nearly all the, the, the dealers would send their teams down to watch it, and it was terrible. 
it was a black and white projected picture up on the screen and and it, the best thing about it was he'd sell about 100 cases of beer so nobody cared <laughs> 100 cases of beer but i remember the aj foyt crash and when they when they had the big crash like the first 11 seconds of the of the race and and everybody thought man who who, who was killed in the thing it was terrible and um they didn't they didn't know i mean you the cars were coming out of the smoke and you couldn't identify him but he did that for many years and he loved uh, nascar folks well how when did your dad pass 2007 2007 mine did too in the same year um uh, well what a shame I, I i wish that i'd I had a chance to meet him uh i never had that opportunity but uh what a character and i know that did when you went in the theater you know he, he, he was always there greeted most everybody that came in well you worked there too I worked in the theaters from 1963 is when I started. That meant I was 12 years old. Back before there were child labor laws. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I carried popcorn, made Cokes and all that stuff. <laughs> but my whole life, my early life was in the theater business. And while Don was going to the racetrack on Saturday, I was down to the theater, you know, being an usher. Well, um, did you ever work at Astroworld? I did. I worked the Maypole. Oh, you and, did? Uh, yeah, some what of year? Other people that worked uh, there uh, uh, and from Westbury, that, that uh, David Chapman comes to mind. Sure. And uh, Ed Seal was the abominable snowman and several other people that were in that thing. But, uh, you know, Don, you're, you're, you're at an age now, you really need to take care of yourself. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, I you. really am worried about you. I really think that you need to take the Sue's position sometimes and let Sue's do some of the stuff. Well, we can we can get her up as you know, get wake her up from her nap, which I guess you're right. I, I should be doing that at but, ten at nine in the morning. Well, <laughs> Don, Don's a spry old dog all to all to himself. Yeah. Well, dog you, being the key. You're all great guys. I got to tell you, it's been a pleasure. Uh, and I love this format that we can interact with you on this show. Uh, back in the early days when you're on ESPN, it was tough. Yeah, well, we sure appreciate you, George. And again, thank you, by the way, to uh, to you for all of the uh, things, the nice things that you've done and, and and added to our show, including the wonderful lunch that we all shared last weekend. It was a first. You know, our show goes into its tenth year next year, and it's the first time that we've all actually had somebody buy our lunch. And we could all share it together. The only thing we were missing is you. you right. Hopefully that uh, next time we have an event like that, that you can come down and share it with us. Well, I'm sorry that Stan couldn't get on, but, you know, he still owes you that five bucks, man. <laughs> <laughs> George, I love you. Thank you so much for calling in today. and We really appreciate it, man. Happy birthday, Conrad. Thank you, George. Happy holidays to you, George, and have a safe new year. Merry Christmas. Y'all too. Bye-bye. Right, bye -bye. Thank you, George. Oh my gosh. So, there was, so you were wondering why we were missing a few guests. We weren't missing them. We just didn't tell you about them. I got you. <laughs> uh, yeah. It was, uh, yeah. So, well, what a great treat. All right. Shall we move on? Sure. Okay. Let's do uh, Conrad's This Week in Auto History, shall we? Well, you know, uh, each week we try and bring you a little bit of an education on things that have happened in the world in automobiles. Uh, this week. So in 1909, you know, we were just talking with George about uh, the uh, Indianapolis 500. It, its name is the Brickyard, and it was built with using over a million bricks. The whole uh, two and a half mile track was brick surfaced uh, up until sometime in the 50s, I believe, until they finally resurfaced it. So it was on this week was when they finally finished building the Brickyard. In, in 1909 in in 1916 and you could see you know you could still see the old the cars from way back then you could still see the brick surface and uh, that brick surface is uh, you know that was in the 50s I believe so in 1916 the Studebaker Cor uh, corporation a leading automobile manufacturer began its world's uh, biggest horseless carriage company and they started construction of their new factory in South Bend, Indiana to build automobiles. 
Uh, and they were one of the leaders in the, in the first half of the 20th century. In 1939, the first production Lincoln Continental was finished this week. Uh, the Continentals of the 40s are commonly considered some of the most beautiful production cars ever made. And uh, you, can, you can look at that and see just how gorgeous that car is. And then in 1941, Buick lowered its prices to reflect the absence of spare tires in their new cars, mainly because of World War II. Uh, in 1947, the N NASCAR was founded at the Streamline Hotel in Daytona Beach. Is that the BBT car right there? That's the BBT car right <laughs> there. That's, that's Betty Skelton might be driving it for all we know. <laughs> And originally, NASCAR was just a bunch of bootleggers driving souped-up hot rods that, uh, during Prohibition that came together, and they created NASCAR. And this hotel still exists, I believe, down in the Daytona area. In 1949, a Swedish company named Svenska Aeroplan produced its first motor car oh, in God. 19... Uh, and uh, it was a Saab. Uh, and the Saab, that was actually a 25-horsepower, two-stroke, two-cylinder engine. Is Never was a Saab fan. Is that where they grow those little sausages that they put That's, in the can? Yeah, the Swedish sausages. The oh Swedish my. fish. <laughs> Gavilta fish. Gavilta fish. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, like I said, the, this car, oh. the entire body was stamped out of one piece of sheet metal. It looks That's like cool. And then they went in to cut the doors and windows. Yeah, I thought it was very, very cool. <laughs> In 1957, the final two-seat T-Bird was produced this week. Uh, and, you know, you got to remember Ford Thunderbirds were a pretty stylish uh, two-seat sports car that was so they more only than built luxury. three years of them. Of the two-seaters, right. That's got the opera window. And that would be a 57. American Graffiti. Exactly. And that was Suzanne Summers, yeah. actually. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, was, it went more luxurious than the Corvette went sporty. In 1979... The United States Senate approved the loan guarantee of $1.5 billion to Chrysler Corporation. You think $1.5 billion back then was a lot. It ain't diddly today, right? And then in, 1990, in 1984, the first Chevrolet Nova is introduced that was built by the NUMI Manufacturing, which oh. is a joint venture between Toyota and Chevrolet. And uh, the... Problem with it was, as the vehicle was introduced into South America, Nova means no-go in Spanish. <laughs> and the NUMI assembly plant now is building Teslas. Is that where that is? Mm -hmm. Fremont, California. I had no clue. You so know, that is this week in automotive history. Thank you very much. I'm looking for a particular story here to start off with because I have so many stories Oh, today. for uh, automotive news? Yeah. So... Honda Motor Company said Tuesday it's recalling 1.4 million vehicles in the U.S. under four separate, four, four separate campaigns, including some linked to reported thermal events. Oh, boy. Japanese automakers said one recall covers 268,000 2002 to 2006 model year CRVs uh, to replace power window master switches. Honda said there has been no reported injuries, but 16 thermal events reported related to the issue. Uh, Wasn't there? There was also a drive shaft recall on there. Honda conducted too. a prior recall of the power window master switches in 2012. The new recall is in response to moisture-related failures of switches repaired under the previous action. So <laughs> we're going to recall the, the recall. recall. Mm -hmm. Honda is also recalling 735,200 uh, 2018 to 2020 Accords, 2019 to 20 Insights. To update the body control module software, programming flaw could disrupt communication, causing illumination of several warning lights and malfunction of electronic components, kind of like that Cadillac that I'm driving right mm -hmm. now. Honda is also recalling, I'm sorry, is issuing two recalls covering 430,000 Acura and Honda vehicles in 22 U.S. states to inspect and potentially replace front drive shafts. Mm -hmm. Both are in response to possible breakage of the drive shafts due to corrosion. All right. You know, and you think through the years how many times different things have been recalled due to corrosion. And that's something that they try and validate uh, as they build and design vehicles, but only time only time. But, will. you know, in, in layman's terms, we think of corrosion as rust. Mm -hmm. That's not necessarily the case when it comes to corrosion. Corrosion could be in anything. Right. Electrical connections, whatever. 
doesn't it doesn't have to be uh, anywhere close to salt. Right. Just humid air. It, and it's more about the humidity than it is the salt. But every now and then you'll see a recall will happen in the Gulf states due to salt as well. Uh, like canaries in a coal mine, car makers and suppliers in China are warning that a shortage of automotive microchips is threatening to slow down the global industry's pandemic recovery. The alarm was sounded this month by Volkswagen and German suppliers Bosch and Continental, which cited tightening supplies of semiconductors and said bottlenecks could run into 2021. The industry is beginning to brace for impact as microchip prices rise and inventories dwindle. Yep. The uh, global supply is running through a funnel in China. And it has for quite some time, and until they do something about that, this is yeah, going to repeat itself. We've got to start buying more American stuff. Even if It's it, not it, buying. It's producing more American um, stuff. Wait, wait. You know, you think through the years, a lot of that stuff was produced here, and then with all of this uh, uh, corporate theft of intel uh, intellectual property, it's stolen by China, given to their companies. They build it cheaper, so cheap, they put the American companies out of business, and then they are the only supplier of it we in the world. We know that won't happen in this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is no intellectual property. <laughs> There's nothing intellectual about anything that we do here. That's it for this segment of In Wheel Time. Part number two starts in just a little bit. Texas Truck Works is your go-to truck customizer. From mild-to-wild lift kits, custom wheels, and steering and handling enhancements to the best personal and commercial wraps, Texas Truck Works delivers. Let Texas Truck Works founder Scott Stevens help you get the most out of your truck or Jeep. Texas Truck Works has decades of customizing experience, including power adders and complete engine swaps. Let the Texas Truck Works team design an upgrade plan that fits your budget. Get truck attitude today at TexasTruckWorks.com. Tailpipes and Tacos is Houston's premier cruise-in, and you're invited to join in. Whether you're a cruiser or a spectator, Tailpipes and Tacos is the place to enjoy made-to-order breakfast tacos, fresh coffee, and mingle with Houston's fun car people. Mark your calendar for Saturday, January 16th for Tailpipes and Tacos at the Lupi Tortilla Mexican Restaurant in Katy, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Tailpipes and Tacos is free and everyone is invited. You'll see collector cars, hot rods, customs, magnificent originals, and resto mods all in one location. Cars from all over Southeast Texas cruise in and show off in a friends and family event. The Loopy Tortilla Mexican Restaurant on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10 and Katy. Drag racer, car enthusiast, and Loopy founder Stan Holt brings you Houston's hottest cruise in, tailpipes and tacos, Saturday, January 16th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's in Katy. The In Real Time Car Show will be there, too. Get your ride ready, and we'll see you at the tailpipe Pipes and Tacos, Saturday morning cruise in January 16th, 8 to 11 a.m. at Loopy's and Katie, weather permitting. Is your business or company looking to stand out in a crowded advertising market? Looking to reach the real auto enthusiast? Well, you found it. You're listening or watching In Wheel Time, and so are your fellow enthusiasts. The In Wheel Time car show now reaches half a million, and we can put together a marketing plan that will engage them in your product, business, or service. To get the tires rolling, just shoot us an email to our marketing director, Jeff Zekin. His address is jeff at inwheeltime.com.